Welcome, Sealer Nation. Thanks for joining us on this uh, film analysis. I'm Bill Oshinsky from SealerNation.com forums, and we're going to look a little bit at the offensive troubles and maybe some of the solutions uh, that we've been having as we're entering into the Bengals game. Uh, it's not exactly headline news to say that the offense has been struggling and has, you know, it's, it's carried over from last year. Uh, it seems like even though we made some uh, changes, you drafting Najee Harris, bringing in Matt Canada as a new offense coordinator, we're still seeing a lot of these short passes, and we're definitely not uh, getting long, sustained drives. But there is a little bit of room for hope, and hopefully we can take a look at this analysis here, see some of the things that we're doing right. Because ever since defense has got the book out on us, it's been predictable what they're going to do. On the flip side, I've got to ask, what is stopping us from exploiting the fact that we know exactly what they are going to do to try to stop us? So let's go ahead and, and look at the our scoring drive last week when we played against the, uh, the, the Raiders. And we had a 75-yard scoring drive in seven plays. It took about three minutes. And it was some very, very imaginative play calling and some really good execution. So here on this first one, let's go ahead and take a look at this play. Uh, this is about nine minutes to go in the third quarter. If you remember the first play of the game or second play of the game, there was a pitch out to Najee Harris. Well, that play worked for two yards and is a play that I think it, it's, it's indicative of Matt Canada and I love it. And I love Najee Harris because well, one of the things he brings to the table is that he is a as a back, he has got both components that are very important in terms of uh, speed. He's got that, that initial burst, and he's got that ability to accelerate in the open field. And not all backs have that, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you think about a back that had that acceleration in the open fields to uh, – Paint a picture for you. Think of like Chris Johnson, who, you know, when his prime, he got a break in the open field. Boy, he just took off. Well, when we had uh, Richard Mendenhall, there was a case of a guy who decelerated in the open field. He, he just wasn't as fast on that open track, but he had a great initial burst. And that's one, and it's not an insult. It's, it's, it's one of the things that made him very good at what he did uh, because not every back had that. James Conner didn't have that. He, he was a very strong back, but he needed holes to be made for him because his, his, his forte was to break tackles. We certainly didn't have that footwork or that burst of speed, but Najee does. So it, it works into the fact that teams are going to bite with it. So on this play here, we're going to watch. You can see here, let's go back a second. It went really quick, but when Ben goes back to pass, they're setting up, see Ben right there is having a fake to, to Najee. And Ben can do this because Ben is Ben. Uh, his hand is so big. He's great at the pump fake. It's, it's what makes him, it's kind of his trademark. And he'll get some people to bite. And look at where the Raiders are here. One, two, three, four, five, six guys that are biting on this uh, fake to Najee. And what does Ben do after? As the play continues to develop, Ben rolls out, and there's not a guy within seven yards of Ben right over here. So he's got one guy at the top of the screen, man-on-man -man matchup. That's Deontay Johnson. And as the play even continues, um, I mean, that's the primary receiver. But Claypool finds his way open over the middle too. So perhaps as, as things uh, evolve, uh, this might be something that, that uh, the Steelers can exploit. That look at here, you know, if you – if Ben sees Her, uh, Claypool, 
this could be something of a 20, 25 or longer. Uh, he might even break this one if he hits him at right. But Ben is going here in stride. He's, he's actually already thrown the ball at this point in time. That's the design of the play. This is the route that's being run. And uh, Johnson is perfectly placed to catch the back shoulder throw. So we look back at it, run the play forward. The, it all starts off with a, f a play fake. Ben takes the, uh, the pump, he's throwing it to a spot even before it breaks. On this next play, this, this one is, uh, it's got a threefold component to it. And Harris breaks off a 14 yard run, but he's certainly not alone in executing it. Uh, let's take a look here. And as we were talking about Harris a moment ago, about his speed and his ability, uh, when we go back to uh, strikers, draft a coverage one of the things that we we're commenting on is needing a running back who's able to make a play win or beat somebody one-on-one -on -one. and he's able to do that in this case in order to make the play but he's not the only one that makes the play uh chucks okafor and uh, kendra green also are getting upfield and this is something that was not present last year so let's play the uh let's go ahead and watch this play on this 14 yard run and then we'll kind of go back and diagnose it really quick. See here where Najee uh, takes her around the corner and breaks it down the field. However, let's looking back here again. There's the pitch. Let's get the ball to the to the athlete in the open field. Also, let's stop here and take a look. We're going to have Green and we're going to have Chucks who are going to come out they're not even engaging in their blocks really at the start as the by design chucks is going out to pull and who's he going to go against he's going to be matched up against the defensive uh, back and that's you know uh for all the criticism chuck's going to take he's certainly not going to uh, have trouble taking out a defensive back on a one-on-one -on -one block now, Kendra Green, he's a guy that we all want to watch because he's been responsible for getting downfield and making a number of blocks uh, for our backs. And he needs to do this at a better clip than he's been doing. Uh, granted, this guy is a rookie, so let's not be too, too hard on him. But he does a good job on this particular play where when we see it, first off, there's threefold. So Chucks makes his way out there. Green is also working his way towards the towards the sideline. And, and Chucks, first, he's identified his man. This is who he's got to block. Green is engaged with the linebacker. And look at this triangle here. This is Najee. This is the defensive end. And this is where they got to get to. So can the defensive end get to that spot? Where he can stop Najee or can Najee beat him to that spot where he can make the turn. And as you can see on the play, despite getting hands on him, Najee's strength is able to get two points E and beat him. At the same time, Chucks and Green, well, Chucks is able to floor his man. Green doesn't floor his man, but he sure as heck prevents him uh, from touching green or so excuse me touching Harris, which results in the play breaking and Harris able to move his way upfield and get the first down. But this was a total team effort. This is what Ben was talking about in in uh, the offense working together. And what was beautiful about this play, if you recall watching the broadcast, uh, the Steelers went up tempo on this drive. They went with a lot more motion. Uh, this was a no. Uh, this was no huddle, and Ben said after the game that they didn't have a no huddle offense. Uh, I don't believe that for a second. And if I were Ben, I wouldn't say that they had one either. I don't want teams preparing for our no huddle, but this one here caught the Raiders off guard. So we got a 13 yard gain and a 14 yard gain on the back to back plays to start uh, this drive. Now we're going to skip ahead here, uh, a play, because the, the play in between was a three-yard loss. I do want to touch upon it then because we did send guys in motion, and it was a jet sweep with, with uh, Claypool. Uh, Firemuth was uh, going in motion, 
and he did identify the proper uh, defensive back to to uh, to block. He just did not complete the block, and Claypool was left with uh, the ability to make a play on it, and the Steelers lost three yards. So it is a second and 13 on this play. Uh, and the Raiders are able to go into that formation that the Steelers have had so much trouble with. Uh, they're crowding the line of scrimmage. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a bad, you know, second and long. So this is a case, though, of we are able to execute this type of a play. Schuster is Ben's favorite target. So we, we'll run the play forward. Ben is already going to go to his underneath blanket, Schuster. He, we do have a, uh, we do have one-on-one -on -one coverage here to the outside, but he's not going to try and break it deep. He's just going to try and go underneath. So this this pattern was completely designed to keep the Steelers out of a third and thirteen and put themselves into a second and manageable situation. And it's only a five-yard gain. But it is a play that, you know, the hair's Ben already throwing it. Schuster already in sync with Ben. Uh, as he's already thrown it, Schuster's found his soft spot, and bam, there's the completion. And gives us a second and eight. Now, this next play is one that is going to stick uh, to us in a lot of ways. Uh, we've run several no huddles uh, we we've up tempoed it and we want to go deep and we want to go over the top well in this case all three of the Steelers receivers are going to go deep that's their route who's going to get open the the Raiders are now a little bit off balance they're going more cover two they're not crowding a line of scrimmage in the same fashion so we have the opportunity to go over the top on this play, which the Raiders have been playing. Hey, let's try and keep guys in front of us. They're going to play press coverage. They're going to try and jam the guys up and challenge the pass rush versus the Steelers um, offensive line. Can they hold their blocks while that press coverage is going on? And as a matter of fact, this is why Deontay Johnson does get the starting nod is that he's able to beat his man going off the, uh, off the snap. He actually is going to draw a penalty about right here. And Ben is going to, you see, we had Juju that was uh, going down. He's getting double coverage. And it looks like, like I said, the cover two uh, with a safety help. This safety for the Raiders, I don't know what he's really doing. Don't really know his responsibility in this case. But to me, it looks like a little bit of a blown coverage. And Ben identifies it when uh, Johnson goes and beats him to the outside. And at the top of the, the screen here, Claypool, it should be noted, he did get jammed, but he ended up shedding the, the jam and actually getting open as well. And would have had a lot more room in which to work. Maybe he would have resulted in a touchdown, but Johnson beat his man with his speed a lot faster. So Ben is, goes ahead and drops a dime right in on here. The only frustrating part about this play Deontay has got to make this and turn it into a touchdown. He has him beat. And this is a good cornerback, by the way, for the Raiders. Uh, second round pick, 2019, I believe. Had a good game against us. But this little shove out of bounds, uh, Deontay should be able to control himself and keep himself within bounds on that. From another angle, let's take a look at this and, and, and give some of the credit for some of the blocking. And I'm going to be the first one who has criticized Eric Ebron, not because of his drops, but because of his lack of effort towards blocking. And here, he sure as heck does a great job of putting a chip block on the outside pass rusher. It almost looks like there's only a three-man coverage. Uh, Najee is staying back in the block and then deciding on, hey, will I be a release valve or not? Same here with Ebron. To the point that Chucks is over here, uh, standing in the middle of the hypocycloids, waiting to see who he has to, uh, to who has to block, uh, which is definitely a, a good thing. It means that the Steelers are getting the Raiders a little bit on their heels, and Ben has time. And you know, we see a little bit of the old Ben, not uh, or the Ben of old, not the old Ben, if you will. 
let's watch here. Ben is looking to the side. He is eyeing up uh, first Claypool, and he's Schuster in triple coverage. So his head's able to turn. He's got time. And he's able to throw down the field to Johnson. We'll look back here again. So Ben is not under pressure. He, the two men, uh, Dotson and Moore, able to take out one pass rusher. Ben has plenty of time. There's nobody near him. Uh, he doesn't even have to look at his underneath valves. He knows he's got his man deep. And really, this is a precision throw. It's just, boy, Johnson has got to stay in bounds and complete that. He does go out to five. We do score. But just like Buffalo in week one, we got we got down deep. A lot of things can happen. So uh, just because you're uh, first and goal from the five does not mean you're going to get the touchdown. Complete it when you can. I hate to say it, but you know, back in the day, we all know that Antonio Brown would have converted that for a touchdown. We just need to see that type of play from our guys now, including a, a real speed and cut man there, uh, DJ. Next play here is not going to be a very exciting play to watch uh, at first glance. And if you listen to the talking heads, they're going to say, oh, I got two yards on it. But this is a great example of, of Harris uh, pulling off a good run when there's really nowhere to go, showing vision, showing that ability to uh, have great footwork. So he'll, he'll get the ball, and there's going to be two lanes that he can go to. And one of the problems from last year is that uh, Snell and, and, and McFarlane, uh, they just pretty much ran to the sign gap. And if it was there or not there, it didn't matter. They didn't have any kind of vision. They didn't have the footwork to, to really cut. Where Najee does here, he decides that he's going to go right, and that hole uh, closes up pretty quick. Then he cuts back to the left and gets two yards. Now, what's the two yards? Is it going to, is it uh, two yards that are going to uh, decide the game? Well, you know, you, you know what? Maybe uh, just moving that ball forward has, a, has, has an impact. And right here, we'll see it from the end zone view. Uh, when Najee gets the ball, his head is definitely on a swivel here. He is looking, he's got two gaps. There's two Raiders here. This one looks like open. He decides to make that cut there, guns into a pile, yet he get, generates his way forward. And I have to criticize on Mike Tomlin with this play. One of the strengths of offensive lines that we can see is that these guys are young. There is strength in their legs. They might not be a cohesive, perfect unit, but take advantage of the fact that they have not been, you know, they're, they're not weighed down by wear and tear. And Najee's not going down very easy. So when there was eight minutes and 30 seconds left and they needed a yard, uh, this team needed to go for it on that play because these guys are likely to get that yard just because they are younger, stronger, and more physical. They might not be, like I said, a cohesive unit and they will struggle at times. But if you're playing to their strengths of just being young and strong and, and, and having energy, they're going to be successful even if it is for a single yard. On this play here, this is the respect that uh, Harris has already gotten. Now, he got only, like I said, he only got two yards from the previous play. Uh, but again, we're going to go ahead. We've, uh, we've already moved the ball nearly 75 yards, and we've done that in six plays. That is the up-tempo. That is the no huddle. That is the men in motion. And that is some of the creativity with some of the play fakes there with that pitch. And Najee has earned respect. He's got teams biting into him. So we saw it work on the first play of the drive, and we're going to see it work on the final play of the drive. He is going to draw a lot of attention as everybody thinks Harris is going to get the ball on this handoff. And we look at the Raiders, one, two, three, four, five, six guys right there. They're all going to be focused all solely on, on Harris as the play develops. I think Steeler Nation saw as soon as uh, Juju goes in motion, he was going to get the ball. This is, this is a Matt Canada special. But as these guys all pinch up, 
couple of Raiders here are just standing out in limbo doing nothing because Juju's not going out their way. And what I love about this is Harris. Okay. Yeah. I'm running up, taking it. That ball snap off quickly. And this defender who has already turned his hips and was ready to go after Harris has now got himself out of position to tackle Schuster. He is nowhere near able to do it. And when they, as Schuster goes, he's got to try and shift. Schuster sees the opening. Now, does this work if Harris does not get the two yards on the previous play for a touchdown? Maybe, maybe not. But because this back guy, the, the, the defensive back who is uh, the second line of defense, uh, maybe can stop him. But Schuster is aiming for it. He's already got the first guy out of position because they they have already bought on the Harris fake. And now Schuster's like, all right, I don't know if I've got it, but I'm going to lay out. As it turns out, he is able to beat the tackle and keep his balance and take it in for the touchdown. So at the end of the day, the Steelers offense had a great drive there in the second quarter. They did not continue to follow it up, but hopefully they're going to watch some of this film and utilize some of these trends and techniques and find a way to implement some more motion, some more uh, play fakes, finding a way to get some of these guys the ball so that they can get more success and sustain success because that was a quick drive that was a lot of quick movement and uh, you know we just have to finish off but the talent is there to make some big plays we just saw it make defensive pay for being aggressive against us and when they find themselves in well on their heels you just saw we can go over the top so i hope you enjoyed this and we'll continue to refine it bring some more uh, members of the uh, of the SteelerNation.com community on and break down some more plays. But hopefully going into this, uh, we have some more positive feelings about what can happen in the Bengals game. Go Steelers today, and we'll sign it off. Take care. <laughs>